The Cabalion, a conversation by Julie Benetti and Susan Barbaro, is a production of EI Publishing in association with EI Alliance, copyright 2018. Visit eipublishing.com for more. Music for this series is courtesy of New Threads, copyright 2018, from their self-titled album, Available Now. Okay, we are back with The Principle of Vibration, talking about the Kabbalion, written Julie's by the Initiates. Julie's favorite principle to discuss. Yeah, we won't She's talk about who's vibration. favorite what. <laughs> Good vibrations. We'll stop there. Anyway, as we look at this, nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Very important principle. Well, you know, the sounds book, like a book I know. Anyway, sounds like a lot of things you know, but we'll stop there. Okay, what we're talking about, the principle of vibration, which is cool, we wanted to start out laughing, because in laughter, there's a vibration. <clears throat> and if you align with the vibration of laughter, and they've done these kind of studies, I think Oprah, hi Oprah, <laughs> did, did something on her show, she did actually, I used to use it in one of my classes, um, she did something about different forms of laughter and what they were called, and people get contagious laughter based on other people laughing which is also a form of vibration which is also the principle of vibration in that sense of nothing rests everything moves everything vibrates well science has proven that i mean you, you know when they look through the you know the uh, microscope everything is vibrating nothing mm -hmm. i mean everything is consistently vibrating it's just at what speed everything is in motion right, right. at what speed exactly and the speed is um, the rate or the frequency, I guess, of the vibration is what is important because as it's been said in different conferences and different arenas, if you can vibrate at a faster speed, you can get a lot of different people engaged in things and so, out of kind of slow, depressed, melancholy, sad oh my God. <laughs> vibrations. <laughs> So it, it does talk about the vibration, I'm quoting the book, the vibration of spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity and rapid, rapidity, 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 oh my goodness, I can't, <laughs> that it is practically at rest, just as a rapidly moving wheel seems to be motionless. And it's, you know, and, and I guess the question becomes is who's, what speed are we at? I mean, if we know we, we are always moving, even ourselves, we're not, in, you know, we think we're solid, mm -hmm. a, a, a solid mm -hmm. person, but we're not. And we're a bunch, right. and, and neither is the table, neither is the chair. Everything right. is, is, is made up ultimately of electrons. I mean, you go to, go to the atom and then you could do a um, electron mm -hmm. and, and everything's consistently always moving. With a lot of space between. Right. Right. And, you know, when you had read that part, and also it says this principle explains the difference between different manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and spirit. I'm glad you, I'm not the only one that's stumbling <laughs> on words here. That's because of the vibrations we're creating, <laughs> something like that. So, I guess, so what's interesting is, if, if we know it, I guess the first question that you'd ask, that I would ask, is, so what is the difference in the intensity and in, in, in oh. how quickly something what is and how do you change I mean so there's two pieces there's wait a second I know you're ready to hit me in the head yeah that hands no, flying no. around I'm Italian the hands, hands flying hands. around my head keeps <laughs> bobbing weaving <laughs> Woo. so so the thing is that you you know so you would ask like how do you define who's at what speed and then if I mean ultimately the idea is to increase <clears throat> the vibration. Mm -hmm. So how would one go about doing that? Well, it's funny too because when you increase the vibration physically, you get warmer. I mean, a lot of times when people are moving and running and get warm. I think a really good example, and I use this on holidays all the time. You know, when you have holidays and you have family, big groups of family over, and you're eating around the table, and then everyone gets really lethargic, and they just kind of go, hmm, who's going to get up and do the dishes? And everyone could sit like that for a week and not even move. 
which is an example of one vibration, yet I always find that the way to kind of cut through that is to just push yourself and say, okay, I'm getting up and I'm going to start doing things, even though you're tired and you change your vibration. Well, you start putting the dishes in the dishwasher, you wash the dishes, you put the food away, you start being active and you feel a lot better. I mean, people say, oh, okay, it's no, a I trip to fan that. and I turkey and I, I understand, and but I'm going somewhere asleep. else. Like, it's well, also that's a situation of, right. okay, so that's great in, in a situation where it's very clearly get up and move. <clears throat> but if I'm sitting here and we're doing something, how do you, you know, increase your, your, your vibration? Um, because ultimately it talks about... Um, let me see, wait a minute. An understanding of this principle with the appropriate formulas enables hermetic students to control their own mental vibrations as well as those of others. The masters also apply this principle to the conquering of natural phenomena in various ways. Well, I think that relates a lot to the example I gave, even though I'm talking about a holiday and kind of a lazy afternoon after eating but still if everybody would just yep. stay there even though there's motion everything is in motion yet it's a very slow motion yet if you increase it then usually someone says oh let me get up and help you or oh, let me get it's like it's almost like you see a movement occur in the different people so if things occur where that changes and, and also i mean you've been in classes even as a kid where the, if the students are all sitting there in front of you and they, they look like they're asleep all of a sudden hey everybody wake up get up everybody stand up oh i don't want to stand up and then you have them shake around or move and you start to create a different physicality of a vibration which creates you know movement period and and everything is <clears throat> so i agree and i understand that Yet we're talking about moving because it says the lowest level, you know, there's, there's two extremes. You have what they're considering, <clears throat> excuse me, spirit on one end, which is the highest vibration. And then the oppo opposite end, you have the lowest levels of matter that move very slowly. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, you can, in the physical way, so now you're doing what I do. You're talking in a physical sense. And that's an easier thing to, yeah, that can happen. So how do you move it when you're in a spiritual sense? Well, uh, you started talking about atoms and molecules and space between, so it's not like you can, you know, sit there and, and think spiritually. I mean, you're you're talking physically. You're ta you look. Are you looking for a reactive movement, <clears throat> or are you just looking um, to? It's I'm a, looking to increase my uh, own. Uh, so it's a, it's an elevation. If you, uh, for example, if you put on, you know, if you put on uh, Stevie Wonder's greatest hits. As opposed to, you know, nothing against Barry Manilow. I love Barry Manilow. But if you put on, you know, a sad song by Barry Manilow, you're at two different vibrations. If, if when you, you of all people, you know, you'd be dancing around the kitchen or whatever you're doing, whether people see you or not. I mean, everybody does that. It's you, you do that often when you're tired. So what you're saying though to me is, okay, that's a physical that thing. That's a physical thing. That's a <clears throat> physical thing. Yet the funny thing is if you go back to the principle of correspondence and the principle of mentalism, well, there's the caveat right there. It's a physical, but it enters into the spiritual and the mental. Okay, so um, they're talking about um, science understands, um, you know, talking about um, the, the more it moves heat and, and um, the ob object, of the more it moves, it, it throws off vibrations of light, heat, etc. Um, okay, so then, so where it goes is it talks later that thought, emotion, reason, will, or desire, or any mental state or condition are accompanied by vibrations as well. Mm -hmm. A portion of which are thrown off and which tend to affect the minds of other persons by, quote, induction. That's a quote from the whole book. That was from the book. <clears throat> So it's interesting because now it and it's talking about telepathy that it occurs because you know these vibrations are given off from a person through their their thoughts and mental states are giving off mm -hmm. a vibration. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay, Kimasabi. So wouldn't it feel like the me. well? So wouldn't it feel like the association of of being in that environment, of being in that same space? I mean, you know, not to throw this out, but I've been in a lot of um, you know in circles of mediums and and circles of where you know different type of readings or doing tarot readings or things like that. When when you're in that vibration, however you get there whether it be, okay, I'll say through meditation or through music or through something that uplifts you, a quote or something that raises that energy, that raises that movement. When you're in it, it's contagious. It can't not be contagious because um, even in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe, there was a great character in there that was a depressing robot and what happened was um, something occurs in the in the end, and I don't want to ruin the story, but he actually um, is, everyone is contagious to his depression. And so, you know, that occurs, and, it, and you know that if you walk into a room, and I mean, it's the same thing with scents in a way. If you walk into the room and it's, you know, there's a strange smell, you can't but feel like, oh, okay, that kind of permeated you. I mean, in a funny way, I mean, that's a, you know, that permeates you and you're aware of it and you sense it and, oh my gosh, I mean, you, you move because of it. Yet there's also something in the vibration of being in that room and what vibrations are occurring in that room. And so when you say yeah. that, the only thing I understand is, is in that awareness it's like, you know, you know, you're somewhere, someone comes in and they're a killjoy, they walk in and mm. you're like, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden the whole energy just goes right down the right. tubes yep. so so for for to use this for your benefit is when you feel it i guess then you change the vibration that's an interesting concept mm -hmm. and it's and it's not just sitting there and being positive i mean sometimes sometimes you can you know how what saturday night live has had what the debbie downer and all those kind of characters that show you're oh there's a depressing mood and it affects everybody until they all just go oh. mm. well that happens in the whole other extreme as well because if you're at a concert and everyone's jumping around listening to music you can, it's hard to sit in your chair and go yeah. i mean people are jumping around you it's like you're so I mean, when, when, I mean, I want to keep on saying contagious, but there is that contagious element of the vibration affecting you. How could it not? And which is, which is an interesting, you know, concept that you want to hold on to. Cause when you think of mentalism and you think of correspondence, then what are you doing with others vibrations? Wouldn't you rather have your own? Well, so basically this is saying that, you know, you can't help, but be affected by a different vibration. Because nothing rests, everything moves. Right, and so everything it's, vibrates. It's like when you're driving down the street, you know, and you're trying to get somewhere, and you're going, you know, forty miles an hour, and someone, you know, comes out from a, the corner of a, another street, and they hit sixty miles an hour, and to get in front of you, and then they go down to twenty, and you're like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's in, in essence. So that's a, so that's an immediate effect of that exactly of that mm -hmm. vibration yet also you don't know because there could be a police officer you know five miles down the road and so that made you slow down and so you don't end up getting a ticket because you were driving behind this guy that rudely came out and was going 20 yet wow thanks i don't get a ticket because now i'm not going 60 i'm going 20. my vibration changed so then I'm going to go back to what I've been saying, if anyone's been listening to these other podcasts. Then, when you want to use it, it says in here that the Hermetic teachings, you know, teach that all manifest... Uh, wait a minute. This produce... Let me see. If I get to the end, when it says... Wait a minute. The students... The student that the principal vibration underlies the wonderful phenomena of the power manifested by the ma masters and adepts who are able to apparently set aside the laws of nature, but who, in reality, are simply using one law against another, one principle against others, and who accomplish their results by changing the vibrations of material objects or forms of energy. 
and thus perform what are commonly called miracles is an incorrect statement. Oh, no, because that's actually what they're saying alchemy is. Alchemy is the change from one form to another. Yet, I would say, <clears throat> who, who knows which, like you said, you use the, the, the cough and the, and the, the thing. So, so if you're going to go in and change something, who, who are you going to go right back to who are we to change anything? We have no idea what a high, you know, go to a higher vibration or a lower vibration. Well, you didn't change anything. You just adjusted your vibration to what appeared right there right. with you. So you could have decided to go around the car right. and go 80. Right. Or beep and, and aggravate that, whatever the vibration that came at you, and go around it, and then you would have gotten so, stopped. Right, but what I'm saying is that if the, the, if the if this principle said, oh, we want to speed up the vibration, well, then you get a ticket, if you use your example, I, or whatever happens. If you speed up the vibration, now the principle says if you speed up the vibration, that's where the spirit state is. The spirit state is in such a high vibration because all is in vibration. So that, that was a physical example because mm -hmm. you mentioned the person coming out in front of you. So I'm coming down to the idea of... This is an interesting concept. I mean, who's to say what the answer is? We're reading this and saying that you want to, you know, one should, one should hope for a, a higher vibration, right? Isn't that because the higher the vibration, the closer you are to? Well, the well, the the principle of vibration is simply that nothing rests. Everything is vibrating. Everything is in motion. Everything vibrates, and you know, even when you see a person sitting. They're resting, but they're still vibrating. But it's if you're walking around the room and pacing, it's a different vibration. So the principle is just saying that nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates, which in and of itself is just really cool to ascertain yourself in your mind and think what that means. Everything is vibrating. I mean, it's, it's very musical, too. Mm -hmm. And then what you do with it is, I mean, that's later on in the chapters. There's some stuff you can do with it. Yet there is, you know, the phenomena of, you know, different manifestations of matter, energy, and mind and spirit based on the vibration, which then goes into alchemy, which is, which is very interesting. Or miracles that some people say going even further. So that would be interesting to figure out how you take the vibration and what you change it into and what you choose to choose, what you choose to change it into. Right. That's an interesting concept right. because one might ask, who's to say which vibration is better? Right. right. Because this gives a, 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 you know, the lowest level of matter is very s slow and then the all is at a highest vibration. So by default, one would assume you're always well, spirit moving. Okay, right. the spirit, which is part, closer to the all, is at a higher vibration. Right. So what I'm saying is if you hear that, the tendency is to, which is what I was saying, how do you increase your vibration? My question becomes... Is that really what you want to do? And I'm not saying it being slower is the answer. I'm wondering. Well, it depends on what state you want to be in. I mean, you don't want to be in an altered state all the time, do you? I do. But <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean, if you don't want to be in an altered state all the time, I mean, that's where you know, with a lot of people or whichever people do tarot card readings or psychic readings or mediumship or anything, they go into a a higher vibrating state. Yeah, no, they don't. They just access. Yeah, they do. If I listen to what they're talking about vibration, all they're doing is picking up the vibration. They're just picking up. Oh, you're talking about the two vibration. different things now. I'm just talking about basic stuff. They're just picking up the vibration that's coming. It says, if you read through here, in the vibration is that thoughts, all of that has a vibration. Right. Right. So that's what they're picking up. 
That's they even said it's part of telepathy. They can pick it up, and they can also you can also access your own vibration. You know, when you're cold and you're at home, right. and if you run in place or you move around, it changes your own vibration. So we're talking about a couple of different things here. It changes your own vibration, but also, you know, there are people. There's vibrations around you. There's vibrations everywhere. Everything is in movement. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> And, and the, the, the real crux of this principle is just the, the you know, the validation that nothing rests, everything moves, everything well, vibrates. Well, so, so if I, what I take from that then, I suppose, is the fact that everything moves is everything's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. It's constantly in flux. Mm -hmm. And so then further on, when we read through the other pages of it, that's... The concept to build upon to change something is that it's always it's people think things are set things are stagnant this mm -hmm. is stuck this is set it, so and so or this event or whatever everything is set in its ways mm -hmm. and that's not the truth and then when we go further in maybe we'll have some interesting conversations about changing your vibration to, for whatever you choose to do because mm -hmm. that's an interesting concept I'm not that's an interesting concept as to what you do and and it's a hermetic principle <laughs> yeah, well, what's good for you and what's not Hermes Trismegistus what, it, what is and what is not good for you so anyways alright listen <laughs> in we'll have it soon and because Here's it depends mind. on what you do <laughs> there's a different vibration to that too we'll be back this has been a production of EI Publishing in association with EI Alliance. Listen to other episodes and visit eipublishing.com for the transcript of this series as an ebook and to find more energized podcasts and books. Find New Threads self titled album, New Threads, on iTunes, Spotify, Bandcamp, or at newthreads.us. Thank you for listening.